turn in an annual report for 0506, right? We're reporting not only how we spent the 0506 dollars in the last 12 months or something like that. We are reporting on how we spent that money over the course of three years. We're also reporting, without mentioning anybody's names, in the body of the annual report, we're talking about the numbers of home buyers we help, the numbers of replacement housing uh, uh, strategy recipients that we helped. Uh, and so we're talking, essentially the annual report, without mentioning names in the body of it, is painting a picture of who we assisted, which means that the total amount of money used to assist a particular household has to be reported and on only one annual report. We must fully record all the money used to help Ms. Smith, for example, only as she got 0506 money to assist her. We would never have an instance where Miss Smith got $10,000 of 0506 money and then another $10,000 of 0607 money. Wait a minute. These are each separate annual reports. Wouldn't that confuse people? Because we don't list people's names. We would be saying, like, one person got $10,000 of assistance here, one person got $10,000 of assistance. That sounds like we're talking about two households, but we're not. We're only talking about one household. So the goal is to track this money independently from the finance department and to associate the expenses for a household with only one of these distributions. And so you might ask yourself, especially if you're fairly newly tasked with this requirement to turn in annual reports, you might say, okay, well, what's so hard about that? I'm just gonna go to my finance office they keep all the records about uh, expenditures, right? Uh, whenever I need to uh, get a check written, they're the ones who write the check. I'll use their information. Show me where this annual report is. No, you can't do that. You have to have another method of tracking your money above and beyond what your finance department uh, does. One of the big reasons is your finance department, or whatever you call it in your community, they're not responsible for tracking some of the things that we have to report on an annual report. Sure, they write checks, so they know about money that's been spent. And they probably also know which money is expended. You see the, the difference there. They know that we've cut one of three draw checks for a contractor. And if you explained it to them enough, they probably remember that, oh, if it's just the first draw, this money is spent, but it's not expended. So there's some information that they collect that is relevant for the annual report. But do they collect any information? Do they track our expenditure deadline? Do they track our encumbrance deadline? No, they probably don't even actually know what those terms mean. It's not the responsibility. Do they track the income levels of people that we assist? It's not their responsibility. In fact, let's think about this for a second. Several of you in the room have had experience with, um, uh, with putting together annual reports. Think back on your experience and tell me, as much as we can, let's brainstorm, what are all the different types of data that you need to collect? Now, I know that we've already talked about expended funds, right? And, and let's also get encumbered funds on here also, right? What, what, else, what else do you have to collect? Demographics. Demographics. Give me an example of what you mean by demographics. Uh, family size, the age, race, special needs. Come to think of it, there's a whole page on the annual report that asks those sorts of questions. Finance isn't collecting that. What else? Leveraging of funds. Leveraging of funds. What do you mean by that? What other kinds of funds are you talking about? Public funds. Oh, that's right. Yeah, well, there's a term. Um, leverage of funds, I'll put. Um, so, yeah, that's right. There's donations. There's the owner contribution, which can be. Um, it, uh, there's public funds like uh, CDBG funds. <coughs> CDBG and SHIP are used on a rehab together. Uh, or home and SHIP are used to help somebody buy a house. Plenty of examples of that. And uh, what is meant by private funds? That's another thing that that talks about what you're talking about, private funds, what's that? The first mortgage lender. Somebody's buying a house, the private funds are the first mortgage money, and that's usually the vast majority of money. You know, if you have a home buyer program, this information, Phyllis, that you're talking about leveraging these dollars, 
Well, you know, there's going to be a line for ship money, public money, private money, owner contribution. If you have a good, uh, a very popular purchase assistance program, the largest figure is going to be your mortgage money. The vast majority of the money that's used to help somebody buy a house is first mortgage money usually, not, not uh, uh, our ship down payment assistance. And so that's very good that we collect this information. There was a comment or question in the back of the room. Yes, set aside compliance. There are three set asides. We'll talk about them a little bit. Income side set aside. We talked about construction rehab set aside. Home ownership set aside. You need to track set aside compliance. What else? Sales price or the assessment. Very good. We have to not only be paying attention to the eligibility of the folks we help, but also what was the value of the house? We were talking about that earlier this morning. So sales price, I'll just put that, but it also means the value of, uh, I'll put that too, value, because that um, deals with rehab. Track, um, pay -offs, all that, you track all that now. Sure. And, um, sure. And, and so off, that's a very good point. Now I'm going to use a different term. <laughs> Phyllis was saying payoffs. So let me put it two different, two different ways. Uh, payoffs can either be defined as program income or recaptured funds. So let's talk about that. We've got to track our program income and recap funds. Quickly learning that I don't spell, I mean, I don't really have all that good handwriting when I write things. Um, what else, what else? Can you think of? So another big one that I'm gonna throw out if somebody doesn't say. That's a good point. Is this some, uh, information, is this uh, assistance that we provided, is it as some type of a loan, could be a forgivable loan, or is it a grant? As in, here, have this money, have a good life, no strings attached, hope you enjoy your affordable housing. We don't generally give our money as grants. We usually give them as forgivable loans or deferred payment loans, but well, we gotta keep track of all that. Let me add one more, which is that, and we've been talking about it on the previous slide, your deadlines, keeping track of, are you on track to get all your money expended or encumbered uh, in time? And so, just put that on here. Now, um, this was very nice of you all to brainstorm with me, especially considering that I think it's on just the very next page, uh, actually this page right here, where in your PowerPoint, you have a list of uh, several of what we were just talking about. Well, I guess here, look, dates for tracking deadlines, that's the way I put it here, set aside encumbrances, expenditures, we even got more than these things that are on this list right here. Lots of things have to be collected, lots of things that the finance department doesn't collect. Here's another answer to that same question. Why do we have to track all this information? Why can't we just rely on the finance department? Well, because it's a SHIP rule, it is a uh, requirement of the SHIP program that your local SHIP office has its own independent tracking spreadsheet, independent of the finance department. 